to the panel as well. So, my name is Raju Chalam. I studied medicine in medical school, but I don't practice anymore. I uh, am an IT person. I did pediatrics and it was easy for me to save a server than to save a baby. Right? So, in this panel we have uh, three key people. Basically, we have a doctor, we have a solution provider, and we had an enabler, which is IHIS. And all of us are probably patients. So that, that uh, completes the loop. So I want to ask basically two questions first and then open the, uh, the session to the floor. Number one is all of you talked about cloud. So IHIS mentioned that they are going into a cloud model. Vanda is also a cloud model. And you, sir, basically doctors, mentioned that you would like something that goes along with the patient, which is basically a cloud model, which is any application available anywhere, anytime, on any device, right? So is cloud basically the solution that we were working on or looking forward for the last 3,000 years? Um, but, uh, just to answer the question, I think the answer would be a, a yes. Um, it, it's all about sharing a piece of information. And it, well, you can call, call it any other name you want. Uh, cloud being the, 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 the flavor of the moment. Well, if I could share that piece of information with the relevant person, um, whatever it takes. Because um, in the old days, it used to be one guy looking after one patient. The, gen the day of the generalist is over, um, where one surgeon or one physician knows everything is over. I think at the simplest condition, if you get admitted to hospital, you'll be seen by the minimum at least three doctors. And the three doctors have to record the same piece of information relevant over time for the patient. So how, how do you enable three people who write three different, different handwriting styles uh, to record it so that the fourth person who is finally going to make their decision, which is four days down the road, um, has that piece of information? And if, if you put the area of geographic um, separation as well, then, then there's no other solution except by linking out. And then you can use, call it cloud. It's a 3,000 year wait. That's, that's a good answer, but let me follow up with one more question. Doctors and surgeons, apart from learning how to rather use a scalpel, now have to learn typing as well. I was a guinea pig in 1993 when I took um, an obstetric and gynecology exam. Uh, I studied overseas, so my university had Macs. If you know the MacBook 165C with a lagging cursor, some of you may not know, but I was forced to take my ONG exam, which is a written exam, on a laptop. I would say that 90% uh, or more of us are keyboard literate. Um, but that keyboard literacy does not translate well when you talk to patients, as I brought up as a point. Because keyboard um, typing that requires me to have eyeball with you requires a level which is higher, which none of us here have except if you are a touch typist. And I'm certainly not a touch typist unless you want to train every single house officer to be a touch typist level, whatever speed they want to get and achieve. Uh, you have not achieved that that literacy rate that you, you want to achieve so that you can speak to you and type at the same time. That puts that aside, I think as a patient, if you put yourself as a patient, you'd be extremely disconcerted if I was typing away staring at you. Uh, I think you'd be wondering where this guy is from. Because I think that's not the norm, and I think it will never be the norm unless something really, really changes. So on that note, can I ask uh, Kenny, because you're a solution provider, why not equip doctors with a laptop that can understand voice and do the typing automatically? Uh, in fact, uh, on top of what doctors say just now, in fact, a lot of our clients these days, they're using uh, writing, writing pad. Yeah, like some of the technology like Wacom device. More and more doctors, they, in fact, 90% 90, 90 I agree with doctors, 90% of doctors, they do, still don't know how to type, don't know how to use keyboard. But then, they write on the device. So um, that's why 
with the cloud technology, they they prefer to write because they can go when they are anywhere they can access the the system, so they can always write. Okay, so Francis, uh, thanks for coming back. One question for I he says you have so many thousands of doctors who are writing all the time. What if the doctor doesn't know typing or makes a mistake? Does does the system correct it to the end? Well, I, well, I, I believe today it is it is is it auto type. But uh, I do know that today the doctors are getting younger and younger, and uh, today the IT literacy has also catch up. Uh, in fact. If you ask me, um, many times the older doctors, if they can't type, they will pass it to the nurse. The nurse will do the typing for them. But uh, as we move towards more IT-based systems where, uh, where care delivery is very well much embedded into IT, many times the doctor don't type actually. The doctors usually will be computer-aided and uh, many times the prescription, they just take they just keep taking and taking things. For example, they do a diagnosis and they want to dis describe a drug. So they have this term called CLMM, which is actually uh, computer-aided like, uh, medical uh, med medications uh, management, where a lot of things actually, they, the system will prompt them and they will just take, take, take. So they actually very minimal, they will write. If they need to write, many times they will just scribble on the note and then pass to the nurse and the nurse will then transcribe back. Uh, it will be ideal if the system can auto-correct and get the doctor to do it. We are trying to do that part, but I think we are still having some challenges for the older doctors. The younger doctors today, they are very much literate. They even carry the iPad along. Uh, many times, most of the systems are now actually delivered through mobile device. So we can see the trend is actually moving towards that. So uh, one last question before I open up. As a doctor, I carry my iPad along and I to go into the OR or, or the operation theater, is the iPad, doesn't, need, doesn't it need to be sterilized? I mean, what about all the germs in the iPad? Doctor? Um, it's not an issue. Uh, if you want to actually access, there is a product which I've seen in the US, um, one of the meetings I've gone to, which is uh, as an anatomy app, just in case you forget where you're going. So they put an iPad within a sealed sterile packaging and it's in the field, which means the sterile field. And the guy's checking and he's taking photographs of the field as he goes along. So it's actually an ongoing medical record as well. So um, sterility in the field is within the theater is not an issue um, because it's getting a bit technical. There's a laminar flow, which is 40 changes a minute. So. The issue about sterility only comes when you have a defined field, which is where the operative field is. Everything outside doesn't need to be clean. Uh, the Germans have proven that uh, their anal behavior about cleanliness didn't add one bit to preventing any other infections. So they, they believe in one-way traffic, which means if you walk out theater, you're going to shower again. So is it the same yeah, as the Germans did it? But the Germans stopped it because it cost too much. And they didn't achieve anything. The, uh, in the U.S., it's just the opposite. The, the resident walks across to buy a sandwich in his scrub and goes back, and, he, and the infection rate is the same. Yeah, so um, there are a lot of studies, which is not the point of discussion here, that doesn't really show. We're actually more worried about the fact that uh, if you bring an electric device into a theater, it's got poisonous gases, the inflammatory gases, it's oxygen-rich, and it's got fire because of the diathermy. Yeah, the whole thing may blow us up. That's the main problem. Okay, I want to open the discussion to the floor if there are any questions. There were some questions when Dr. Fan was speaking, uh, Francis Fan. No questions. Yes, sir. Do we have a mic? Uh, question regarding patients' uh, confidentiality. Uh, the issue about Cloud, OneDrive, SkyDrive, or whatever you want to, to call it, right? Um, who actually owns the information that is downloaded into such a service? Um, is it a the cloud service provider that owns? In which case, therefore, the patient's records are actually residing in someone else's domain, and that someone else potentially has 
absolute right over it or can can misuse it or or things like that. How how do you all deal with these sort of issues um, when legislation has yet to actually catch up with uh, with all these sort of issues? This is a question for IHS. Well, I don't represent the doctors, but I believe um, if a patient comes to the doctors, uh, comes to the institutions, the records belongs to the institutions, even though it is actually for the patient. Uh, for a reason very simple, uh, because as the care delivery, it's easier to do the care delivery, they have a responsibility to make sure the patient is healthy. And how do you make sure that the patient actually get the best care? Actually, through all this recording. Uh, if you do understand in today's Singapore landscape, healthcare landscape, we have a national EHR, we have a cluster e e EHR as well. Uh, they actually exchange record. All these records actually belong to the cluster or belong to the country. It doesn't belong to the patient unless the patient requests for a copy. Right? And that's how, how today healthcare has been delivered. Uh, the records, when they come to the cluster, it goes into the systems of the cluster and belongs to the cluster. And the cluster has a responsibility to make it confidential, to make it secure. Uh, that is actually the responsibility of the, of the hospitals or the clusters. But the ownership belongs to the, uh, the hospitals. So, Kenny, uh, since you yeah. are... Yeah, for the private care, um, we are the application cloud service provider. We don't deal with patient directly. So, the information pro, um, provided by the doctors or GP or this is belonging to the clinic. We still, of course, you might ask, what if those uh, medical parameters like heart blood pressure, which is the patient upload to our cloud server and then from our cloud server download to the clinic, uh, clinic database, uh, is still owned by the doctors because we don't sell the services to the patient. In the other way, we don't deal with patient. We only provide services to the clinic and then the, the doctors will decide whether they want to share this information with the patient. Yeah. Good. Any, any other questions from the floor? Yes, sir. Hello. Okay, the question is, uh, will be for the Francis Tan. And then uh, as, uh, just, uh, okay. as uh, just now, the Dr. Tan already mentioned that uh, this uh, personal medical records is uh, quite important as uh, useful for the doctor to do the further analysis for the whatever the issue for the patient. So just now, as I understand is the public public, uh, this healthy, have the, those hospital have its own records, also the private, the, those GP, uh, family doctor have its own records. So all these uh, records basically is just related to a single person. So I'm thinking, uh, are there any, any initiative from a government point of view and to try to combine all these personal medical records together? And then in order to help the government and all the, all the medical system to further take care of the personal health Okay, this one is the first one. And the second one, besides this medical records, how about the, in further, is uh, we're trying to have the, those health records, just like the, to, to prevent the, those uh, diseases happen, not only the, to do the later and then to kill the, the personal problem. Oh. So, just to paraphrase, you are saying, what about all of the records which are owned by the government? What does the government do with the records? Is that correct? Yes. yes. Uh, are there any the initiative for the government point of view and then to consolidate all of the records together? To consolidate all the records together. Uh, also eventually and to give back this, uh, this uh, I mean, uh, this personal data to the personal. Uh, because I feel is this kind of personal data is more like the like your CPF contribution. You you have the own records. It uh, shouldn't belong to the other people. It still belong to your personal one individual. Yeah, let me let me try to answer. Yes, I think the government is trying to actually put into this concept one patient one record in Singapore. That's where the national uh, EMR system is all about. We call it the NIRA or NEHR. Uh, every patient who actually visit the public healthcare will have one record. Regardless of where they go, their records will be accessed by any hospital, public hospital. 
Uh, this system has not been open to the private care yet, but I, I do understand that the intention is to do so. So yes, government is trying to consolidate all the records. But on the cluster side or on the hospital side, they also have their own records. Um, and these records are actually close to the, the, to the hospital. Um, they are actually, at this point in time, shareable, but they are still two records. One at the hospital, one at the national level. Uh, the consolidation will, will still continue. Today, if you understand healthcare, uh, due to the legacy, every cluster have their own EMR system. The heart to every patient is the EMR record. That's where you document the patient, what do they get, what, di what disease they have, and what diagnosis they have, and so, so forth. Plenty of information are inside the EMR. And obviously, it is not for the patient to see because it is just too complex for the patient to know what is all this about unless you are actually uh, having some medical degree or what. Then you really understand. Uh, to actually interpret the record is not for laymen like you and I to understand. Only the medical professional to understand. So yes, actually we are, the government is trying to consolidate all into one patient, one record system. But that's where the, the national issues are. Now you're talking about for those patient information, not really patient, I would say that those are healthcare information for each individual. I, I, I do understand that there will be a, pay, a portal coming up where citizens like us will deposit or will key in our health information. For example, uh, our probably heartbeat, our blood pressure. These are information pertaining to you and you can understand and you can upload into the portal. And then for the institutions or the hospital to have a look, to have an assessment of your health profile, how healthy you are. And then from that, advise you what you should do. Those are to me a patient, not really a patient, but a health portal. And those data are actually belongs to you because you key the data yourself. Right. But they will be used by the institution of a hospital to give you a better advice and what you should do and what you should not do. I think this is actually coming. If I'm not wrong, it should be rolled out very soon uh, as the health portal. There's a name to it, but I think at this point in time, maybe it's too fast to actually give you what will be the final landscape. Uh, what I can only say is, yes, it is actually coming. Uh, every patient or every Singapore citizen will be actually given the opportunity to upload their own personal health information. I would say it's health information, not even patient information, because you are still not sick. Uh, it is actually for your own health good that you put inside. One day, if you need it, the doctor will advise you, looking at your, your, your health pattern, then they will give you appropriate advice. But that is health water coming along the way. So can, he, can I ask you the same question that he asked? Because you are dealing with uh, data which is outside the government as well. So in your case, does the record belong to the hospital or to the patient? To the clinic. To the clinic. I don't call it hospital. <laughs> Yeah, the private care service provider. But his question was, shouldn't his records belong to him? You need to clarify. I think what he is asking is his own health information, where he uploads into a portal or into a place. I think those records very likely to be actually on, on, on his own because the, the hospital will just access the portal and then do an advice on it. Maybe I can give you an example. Um, a doctor would like to keep the patient to come back forever because patient is doctor customer right you wouldn't yeah, patient so these days doctor tend to give away some information back to patient like what kind of uh, record what kind of medical record you have in my clinic yeah they like to share with the patient that is one way to retain patient to come back because once you switch doctor this information will not carry with you, carry away with you. It's still retained inside the clinic. So that was his question, uh, which is also being debated in the U.S. So U.S. has got something called PHR, right? Personal Health Record, which is separate from the EMR, which is Electronic Medical Records. So just to give an example, if I come to your clinic and I take an X-ray of my hand, that X-ray, I have paid you for the consultation and for the X-ray. Therefore, the X-ray and the image of that X-ray should technically belong to me. Is this a correct assumption? To that, quite clearly, and this is from my perspective, I spoke to some of my colleagues who are discussing this point as well, which is very clear. To us, it's as clear as day. And, uh, the information belongs to the patient. 
let me quantify the statement. It's very clear. The analogy which I gave my colleague was that if I donated blood to the blood bank and you needed blood and you happen to be A plus like me, they will give you blood. The blood, when it says I donate blood, this is a donation by a donor to save lives. After they resuscitate you and you're alive, you will have a bill, even though the blood was donated. The blood is free, but the processing of that blood, the storage of the blood, the safety of the blood is the what you are paying for. So if you get this analogy about medical records, the record is yours. You paid for the x-ray. You told me the information. I didn't ask for it, but I am paid a fee to process it. I am holding the record for you because it's required by law. Two, because I can process the information because I was trained. And three, if you request that piece of information, the information will be given to you. But if it's given in the raw form, the other person who's reading it, especially if the person is not a medical person, will not benefit from the piece of information. Therefore, I have to spend 15 minutes or more, depending on how complex the situation is, to write a summary of your problems, to highlight the salient points, to say that you have this disease, and there's proof that you have this disease, and the treatment is as follows. On a piece of paper, on an email, on an affidavit, sometimes the lawyers require it, and there is a charge to it, whichever the cost might be. The information is free, it is yours, because you have requested it. But the processing fee requires time and effort. Okay. The piece of information, if it's electronic, has to sit on the server. Someone's got to pay for the electrons to keep the hard disk spinning. Okay. Unless you buy a solid state, someone's got to buy the solid state to keep the piece of information and it's growing by the minute. So there's a cost to keeping information. If I wrote it in a medical record, like the ones I have, I have to earmark a section of my clinic to put the folder. And if you go by rental, which is Mount Elizabeth, which is crazy, $28 per square foot per month, I will measure the cross-sectional area and the weight, and then that is the cost of maintaining that, that folder for five years before you actually put it into a micro microfilm and you keep it in some uh, storage facility, which brings the cost down, but nonetheless, it still costs money. It, the money is the instrument to keep your record. And my job is to not give it to anyone that asks for it. My job is to give it to you that you understand. And my job is to it, communicate with the person you have instructed me to give the information to legally sign in a clear manner so that the person who's receiving it knows what he's actually receiving. So my take on it as a, I think is, is the confidentiality thing I set you with you in a room. You told me your information is yours. How do I process it? That's where it costs money, it costs time, it costs a lot of effort. So that's the key that I say. So the, the blood that you get in Singapore is free. You can't buy blood to keep yourself alive in Singapore. But you have to pay for the services that keeps the blood in the bank. Just like any other bank that you pay, you, you pay interest to keep minimum sum to keep 5,000 in your business account. Below 5,000, they charge you money. It is the same principle that applies. Any any other questions from the floor? Yes, sir. Uh, I was really interested in the uh, forward-looking nature of your technology use as a doctor, and I especially like the idea that you should be able to call up that information on me that sits in the record, irrespective of whether you're practicing in private or public, and make a decision based on a knowledge of my history, an informed knowledge of my history that is not predicated on my having to explain everything to you. I think there's a, a tension between what you want and what the, and what the IT services can provide. And I, I think you've lived it for a very long time. How do you reconcile that uh, with what we know would be very, uh, a very uh, appropriate move forward in, in dealing with healthcare? 
And I say this because I'm at the Lee Kong Chen School of Medicine, and we're training uh, young doctors to be. And the, I think the EMR records is a real interesting point in case, because we've given our students iPads. And there is no way in God's green earth they'll ever have access to patient uh, materials while they are in training. And I think that they're, they should have access to that information as part of their, of their training. But I know inherently that there is a, you know, there is a residual uh, political, social, and technological challenge. How do you, how do you respond to that? Okay. Um, it, the U.S. is a little bit different animal. I, I, I presume from North America. Okay. Um, where that is I, I've been in Singapore a very long time, so sure. I, North okay. America doesn't come into this one for me. Okay. 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 You, okay. One question is you're asking me is how do we train the next generation? Um, without well, before we do that, deal with the how do you reconcile the tension that okay. already exists between what you want and what the technologists will allow? I think doctors are adaptable. I mean, I, I've gone from writing notes on paper in the first quarter of my career to typing notes in the middle quarter and now uh, typing and writing because the technology allows. I, I think that the point here is that doctors will move and survive and we have for the last 3,000 years uh, at least recorded history uh, regardless of whichever form if, we ha if I have to chisel something on the, on, the, on, the, on the stone, I will. Because the law requires me to keep a record. Um, we've always treated um, medical record keeping, whichever form it may be, take as the cornerstone of how we practice. Whether it comes electronically or paper, I, I still whatever ball is thrown at me. So I don't see the tension. The tension is in the relation of someone providing me the slate when I don't want the slate in brown, I want it in black. But the slate's a slate. I'll use whatever slate you give me. And that's how it happened in, when I was practicing in the, in the government service. So I'm very aware of what uh, Francis is talking about, because I've used it for the best part of 15 years. But I'm in private practice, so I can buy the colored slate I want. So I bought the red one this time. So I, I don't think there's a tension in that sense, uh, how I record it. Um, if it came down to putting stones in my clinic, I will, because it's a law. And I have to keep my practice running, uh, that being the, the, the premise of why I do it in the first place. So that's the first question answered. It's not really a tension for me, personally. Electronic medical records for students who technically can't have the confidential right to see it, that's for the dean of the medical school to make a call. We've actually dealt with that. Because you're right, you can't train somebody without information. And you certainly can't train somebody uh, to read second-hand information. So when we couldn't do that, I just told my medical students, which I used to, I used to teach, I said, go meet the patient. If it's 7 p.m., you don't go home, you sit there, and at 7 p.m., you talk to the patient. Because the origin of that medical record is from the patient's mouth. So I actually circumvented that problem as well. But I think you're right to highlight that um, we're taking it a little bit too far in terms of confidentiality. Because every healthcare provider, me and myself included, have signed the oath. The lawyers laugh at us because we are the only ones with an oath um, so far. Um, I have to live by that oath or else uh, face up with the penalties that come with it if I don't. And um, I think it's been dealt out to several of my colleagues in the years before. So we, we live with that tension. If that tension can transfer to the second question. We have answered your question so far. Yep, that's good. I think we don't have time for any more questions. I, I want to end this with one question for all of you. Despite all of this technology, despite cloud, despite big data, despite edge cloud, uh, we have fewer beds, we have more expensive healthcare, we have all these issues in the newspapers about uh, healthcare not matching expectations. So, is technology going to solve this problem? 
or is government going to solve it or are doctors going to solve it let me let me let me try the first thing <clears throat> i suppose today in singapore context we are yeah we actually healthcare delivery is actually behind the curve uh, but the government is giving a big push to actually match demand uh, my personal take is it will match and uh, we are actually pushing a, a a hard push but today i always felt that to really make a professional doctor we need four, four to six years or probably six years in singapore context that is actually a, a big stumbling block to our healthcare delivery but if we can actually make it shorter that would be ideal but obviously in singapore context we cannot compromise quality so that that is actually given um therefore the next thing is to do is how do we make the doctor more proficient through it is the only means uh today if you visit the hospital you find that 90% of the process the clinical process are computer aided um so much so that if the it system breaks literally the doctors stand still and they are the one who screen not the patient because standing in front of the doctors are the patient the patient the doctors getting tremendous pressure because they don't know how to diagnose all the records is in the computer and the computer is down so they are actually crippled in that particular sense and that's why we are saying that we moving the technology moving the orders thing to h cloud automation and so on it will make the doctor more productive hopefully we actually invisibly increase the supply of doctors indirectly so that's way, one way i can see it helps and uh, if you do understand today all the hospital is on emr level 6 right i think we are moving to emr level 7 uh with that fully automated hopefully process is actually qa process is guided uh we have actually invisibly increase the pool of doctors that's how i think it can help in the healthcare space hello yeah. for the private um you i can see more and more doctors um willing to go to it in fact the technology move, moving very fast it's just that doctor cannot catch up sometimes um i give you a scenario um we we have one client he practiced for most 30 years he got about 20000 records for his clinic he tried, he's going to retire and he going to uh, sell his clinic and pass to the another younger doctors the problem is um all the record he has all in paper and the new doctors very unwilling to pay a price for all this paper so he can do he the only way he he can do is to digitize the records and then scan it and put it to our system so this is one of kind of scenario and more and more doctor facing the same problem i give you another scenario is like hard copy when you go and see a uh, a doctor sometimes doctor might pull out a new case note for you because he cannot find your your old case note especially especially your family doctors who has seen for years sometimes it's not that the case note is missing sometimes is the case note is misplaced because there are so many of the case note there and imagine that if the doctors keep every case note and sometimes when the nurses they are very busy one nurses they handle many things so they misplace it how can they find back the your case notes we contain years of records yeah so averagely um in average there's about 1% mistakes they made meaning that we play somewhere and how are you going to how how much time you going to um rectify this problem so the only way to rectify this problem is to digitize it to digitize it then doctor had to invest but because the cost is getting cheaper and cheaper like computing power hard disk space and then more and more doctor willing to spend this kind of money yes last word from the doctor yeah, just to close it um information technology whichever means it comes slate or otherwise it that tools and i i so i would be you be surprised if i say it wasn't a tool because i'm here and i actually believe that um the way forward is really how do we make it an efficient system uh it's here to stay and uh francis and many are right i mean it that's the way to circumvent all the problems they brought up i, I think it's the synergy once has to speak to the end user and me being one of them 
how do you actually rationalize the two? Of course, doctors have ideals. And we are idealistic people. We want to do things the way we want to do it. But with 15 years behind, there are some things you have to be a compromise to answer the questions just now. There's no tension. As long as it's, I agree that it's reliable, as my boss used to say, it must be reliable. You must be reliable. Two, it must be relatively easy to access. As long as you meet these two broad criteria, I, I think um, information technology and, and in, this, in this forum, iCloud, which I think is the current situation and we should move in the dire that, that direction, that's the way we should do it. There's no uh, problem per se. I think it's just an ongoing evolution that all of us in medicine are used to. You know, treatments change, our patients change, even diagnosis change, um, even causes of diseases change. Every day we read something new. Um, there's no different for IT. IT is just one of the pillars that brings some medicine forward. And I think to hide yourself in a written note in this day and age uh, won't get you very far. I mean, the joke is that you'll be writing notes about the patient, but you'll be accessing PubMed to get your papers to make sure the diagnosis is right. And there lies the, 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 the oxymoron, and it's opposite to each other. The doctors, the a 75 year old man knows how to go to PubMed to look for the relevant papers, yet he writes it on a piece of paper. So go figure that out. I mean, I'm still figuring it out. So my boss does that. My ex-boss, 75 years old. So go think about that. So I always, I'm thinking about why he does so. I ask him, why can't you write it? The poor nurse that he write, types for him. But he accesses PubMed himself. And he types the diagnosis in the search, search bar correctly. So I don't know why he can type that bit correctly, and yet he gets the nurse to type for him. So I don't understand that. Okay, I'll leave you with that thought. Okay, on that thought, please uh, join me in 